Okay, let's take a look at a bunch of other TK into widgets that we can use. So I have a simple GUI program running at the moment over to the right. And this is, this is our GUI. So we have a couple of checkboxes. We've got some radio buttons. These are good for mutually exclusive options and checkboxes are for tenant controlling things individually. I have this slider that can go between zero and 100. And I have this spin box as well, which is just a neat way to select between some predefined values. I've chosen one all the way up to 11. So let's have a bit of a play around. Uh, let's imagine that this was connected to some lighting, for instance, so we could turn the lights on and off. And we can see in the shell, the Python shell, that checkbox number one is now one to indicate that that's checked. If we turn on the sprinklers, checkbox number two is now one to indicate that that's checked as well. And of course, if we turn them off, then they both return to zero. Underneath that, I have this label widget. So that's a neat way to include text in your interface. And in this case, we can actually make the text dynamic so we can use it to display a status. For instance, if I select option one, I've got radio button one selected, that text has been updated. And of course, it makes sense that that should turn into a two once we select option two. Playing with the slider, we can set this to something like 24 and hit the load button. And in the shell, we have that value returned. So there's clearly some, some variables being used now. There's variables that are storing the values for the checkboxes and for the radio buttons. And indeed, this slider has a, a much larger range. I haven't connected this spin box to anything. It's not too hard to imagine that this number could be spat out in the terminal quite similarly. So let's have a look at how each of these widgets are built. Over in the script itself, we've got a couple of imports again. That's the same as last time. We don't have any GPIO because we're not driving any LEDs. We're making the window, the title and the font. And then we're using something called frames. I'll come back to that. These are the variables that we interacted with. So when we started to check some boxes, select some options, these are the variables that were being updated. And TK inter needs to use these objects called inter vars or double vars to hold the values for whatever comes out. So much like how we could attach, say, a command to a widget, we can also attach uh, variables to certain widgets as well. And we'll see that when we get to defining the widgets. I'll skip the event functions for now. They're, they're quite simple. Let's just uh, scroll down to where the widgets are defined. So this, this has everything that we see on the, on the screen. We've got the button, that's the, the load button. We have two checkboxes, a couple of radio buttons. We've got that slider bar, the spin box, and of course the exit button. So this, this should all look now kind of similar. Because widgets share a lot of the same properties, declaring the widgets gets quite repetitive. And that's why we're not doing a code along for this one. We're just taking a quick look. You can kind of think of this section as providing a neat little chunk of code that you can pull out and copy into your own script. And that way you can very easily start to build these GUIs rather than having to type everything out manually. That would just be excruciating. So let's have a look at the checkboxes. We have check one is, is an object that we're creating and we're creating a check button. Now, rather than put it in the window, like we did last time, I'm putting it in this thing called left frame. And using frames is how we can organize our widgets, perhaps a little more easily and quickly than using the grid. Where we use the grid to explicitly place widgets, using a frame, a, is, a frame is a widget itself really. A frame is just a widget that can contain other widgets and even other frames. So if we create a frame and fill it with widgets, we can move that entire group of widgets around very easily. We've got, some, we've got some text. This is where we have attached the variable. So check value one, the, the, inter, the intervar check value one has been attached to check one, that makes sense. And it's also connected to some command called check toggle. 
A similar thing is happening for check2. We've got check value2 and it's connected to the same command. That's okay. Now, let's return to framing for a minute. In this GUI, we can see, if you look, if you look closely, perhaps, you can see that we've arranged things into what's essentially three columns, but they're really three frames. So I have this left frame containing the checkboxes, this text label, and the radio buttons. I have a middle frame containing the slider and its load button, and then some frame on the right containing the spin box and the exit button. So when you look at the definitions for those objects, you'll see the check button and their associated radio buttons and even the label, wherever that is. Where is that label? There it is. So the check buttons, the radio buttons and the label have all been put in the left frame. So that's been, that's been done with a command called pack and pack does exactly what it says on the box. It just allows tkinter to efficiently pack these objects as, as densely as possible so that they form one group. So we're packing everything into the left frame, but what are we doing with this frame? Well, right at the top here under my GUI definitions, I'm just creating an object called left frame and I'm calling, I'm making it a frame object and that's where I'm putting it in win, which is the window. And then much like all the other objects, I'm packing that frame on the left-hand side. So just to reiterate, you can make a frame and pack it, and you can fill that frame or you can pack that frame with other widgets and even other frames. So this is a really useful way for us to group items that have similar functionality or are all intended for some job. Like if we had a home automation GUI, we could have all the lighting in one frame, we could have some irrigation in another frame, and we could have, let's say, air conditioning in another frame. And that would be perhaps a neat way to arrange it. Uh, continue, continuing on to, let's take the slider this time. We have, this, we have a slider variable where we're, we're making it something called scale. So this, this widget is actually called a scale in tkinter. I've just decided to call it a slider. It's being packed into the mid frame with the pack command and it's been assigned to the mid frame. Of course, we've got some variable that we're assigning to it. And this time we have a couple of other arguments which are from underscore. From underscore has just been used because there's already a piece of syntax that exists called from. So to make it unique, we've used from underscore and from and to, and that just sets the upper and lower limits. Somewhat counterintuitively, from is not the bottom of the scale, from is the top of the scale. But that's, that's just a little idiosyncrasy. Similarly with the, with the spin box, we have, uh, we're creating an object called num option. We're making it a spin box and we're putting it in the right frame. Again, we've got a from and a to, and we can set some width. So if we get really large numbers, we can deal with that. This time, however, I have decided to arrange the spin box in the top of the right frame. So we can still kind of choose where objects sit within a frame because I wanted that spin box to sit above the exit button. So we can see where we define the exit button. I forced that to the bottom of the right frame. So we have all of these variables being set whenever we interact with these widgets, but what's actually happening behind the scenes? How are we pulling the value of these variables out? So all of these widgets have been attached to a command, except for the slider, but we'll see why that isn't in a moment because it has that, that load button. So if we go up to the event functions that have been programmed, let's take a look just first at the, the button press. So that's, that's this load button, which has been attached to button press. And when we press that load button, we get slider value is, and then the slider value. So in that function, we have a print statement, and then we're just saying our, our regular print command with a format, and what we're performing is slidervalue.get. So remember, slidervalue is something called a double var. Now that's not just a number, it has a, a few other properties associated with it, but if we want to extract the numeric value that that double var has within it, we use this 
this function dot get. And you'll see that for the checkbox values as well. So we, when we toggle the checkbox and we get this text appear in the check toggle function, we have just our, our text with some formatting and we have check val one and check val two dot get. So this is why both the check boxes were pointing to the same function because we want to display the status of both checkboxes regardless of which one is clicked. We just want to indicate that something has been updated. And of course, the radio button. We're not actually printing anything to the screen here. What we're actually doing is modifying the text of this label. So the radio buttons point to a command called check radio, which is up here. And what all check radio is doing is creating some string called select. So we're setting select is equal to, and we're concatenating the string radio button, and we're concatenating that with rad.get, which is going to return an integer, but we want a string. So all I'm doing then is packing that within the str for convert to string function. So we're, we're concatenating radio button, some number selected. So we've got rad get returning an integer and then str converting that integer into a string value for that to, to, to show that number as a string. And that's about it. So you can, you can think of this script as essentially a template to base your other scripts off. So you can very quickly pull functional pieces of code out of it.